Good morning, good morning everybody. Oh my goodness, it seems like lots and lots of spots this morning. So we've managed to find a, well we didn't find her, but uh, we are on a sighting with a female cheetah at the moment. And uh, she's actually in a very nice area for us. Signal's great and everything is good here. And uh, I reckon we're going to stick around here and watch this female cheetah for a good few hours. Isn't that just exciting? This is my first Medique cheetah. So I have seen cheetah before elsewhere, as you all know, but here in the northwest province of Medique, this is my absolute first. Rian, did you get cheetah last time? Mm -hmm. You didn't get cheetah. First time here uh, as well. Okay. Uh, okay, so she's got attention of something again. I just can never see what she's looking at, which is normal. I mean, they, like I mentioned, their eyesight is just too good. But we do know that there were wildebeest around here. Not sure where the lions were hanging out. You know, she will behave much like this if she catches a sight of, you know, a spotted hyena or a, maybe a lion that's moving around, which is doubtful that the, a lion would be moving around this time, but you can never rule it out. A nice way that cheetahs have learned to avoid their competition, so their main competitor is actually lions, um, but really, you know, spotted hyenas as well, even jackal. But uh, to avoid lions, cheetahs have adapted to becoming more day active on average. I'm looking kind of back at my experience with cheetah sightings and I mean, definitely these three, it's been a mix of finding them in the very open areas in the western side of Amakala. And then the rest of the time they've been up here in the north where it's a lot thicker. So, I don't know, I think these three prefer thickets to open grassland. It definitely helps them hunt, that's for sure. And maybe it's because they're inexperienced, being young, they're not even two years old yet. They might not be so good at stalking up to things in an open area. But where there's thickets, like where we are now... It might be easier for them to actually get close enough to prey, to not have to rely on speed. Because also remember, two of them are injured, two of them are limping. So they can't really build that speed. So I think these three almost rely on thickets. They're a bit of an exception at the moment. But I'm also trying to think of where I've seen cheetahs in the Kruger Park region. It's, it's, you see, this is the tricky part. It's not quite the same between places like East Africa and South Africa. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave you to enjoy this. I'm just gonna cue a moment of silence and let's watch this magnificent sighting. Incredible. But for the most part, they've just been standing like statues. <sighs> Very different colors on the two of them. The, the younger one is definitely more lightly colored, more red. The older one's slightly darker, and this is pretty normal. Giraffes do tend to get darker as they get older. I do know a few exceptions to the rule though. I've seen uh, a very old giraffe that was very light in color. And contrary to popular belief, it's not male-female specific, it's genetic specific. So just because the one that's bigger is darker doesn't mean it's a male and the other one is a female. 
it's most likely due to age and genetics. And then of course here in Ukukoya we have had a lot of activity constantly from all of these animals. And I finally once again got to share my beautiful African Jakarna and Juma with all of you. And of course Dewey. Let us not forget Dewey, <laughs> our hippo. But as I say, thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you for all of your questions, all of your comments. And I really do hope you will join us again tomorrow. But of course, stay tuned if you want to keep it wild. wild stay tuned after this. And then of course later, do join us for Sunset Safari. Hopefully it'll be a good one. You never know what might happen.